In 2157, humankind has created the extraordinary hypothesis of instruction and gotten freed of wars, hunger, and fear-based oppression. Earth's nature has mended, medication has progressed sufficient to spare individuals from any illness, and space traveling has gotten to be the standard. Max is traveling around the universe in his own spaceship, whereas maintaining a strategic distance from the calls from his family since they need him to go back to college. All of a sudden in space rock hits the transport and harms it seriously, causing Max to arrange an emergency landing. Tragically, the transport has gotten to be outlandish to control and crashes on the nearest planet. Max oversees to urge outright some time recently it detonates, meaning he is presently stuck on this interesting arrive. He begins investigating the region and finds signs of a bonfire, then takes note animal covering up adjacent. Max tries to communicate with it, but the animal runs away, when abruptly a trooper named ZEF finds them and focuses his weapon at Max, saying something he can't understand. Max snatches from his belt a small interpretation gadget that he puts into his ear, causing the officer to shoot at the belt to create Max lose it some time recently capturing him and taking him to the closest town. Max observes in stun how the town looks like a bleak adaptation of soil similar to what he's seen in history books. He's sent to a lab where a few researchers put a protective cap on his head to see into his contemplations as they examine him. Be that as it may, they still don't accept he is an alien and it's chosen he LLB exchanged to a mental healing center within the capital with Trooper Fellow as his escort. At that minute, each individual within the zone begins excitedly chanting the country's anthem, promising devotion to the government. In any case, ZEF collapses as he contains a seizure and is taken absent by the specialists. On the way to the city, Max takes note the terrible state of the town and a few tremendous towers each couple of miles. Fellow clarifies that they are protection against adversaries. At that minute, and blast crushes the base of a tower and makes a drop on the street, causing the debris to slaughter a number of individuals whereas they attempt to run away and crush most of the trucks. When a huge metal street punctures Max's truck, Fellow gets caught beneath the rubble, but Max promptly surges to pull him out with exceptional quality some time recently they may well be come to buy the approaching blazes. Now they have no choice but to proceed their trip on foot. As before long as they arrive within the capital, the head of the Office of Extraordinary Inquire about Strider listens around it and inquires his employee Funk to bring Max to his office. In the meantime, Max is being kept in an unsafe office where they put him interior a water tank to keep on looking into his intellect. Be that as it may, the tests are interrupted by Funk, who employment Strider's identification to require Max absent against the scientist's wishes. In the meantime, in the government building, state prosecutor Umnik moreover inquires his representative to keep an eye on any news related to Max. At that point, Umnik takes note the time and stows away in his lavatory to have the seizure in private. At the same time, Funk is taking Max absent in his car and finds the street blocked, so he has to discover unused course. He is apprehensive since he is taking note the time, and at that minute he starts having a seizure. As the specialists come to choose him up, all the local people start chanting in favor of the government and call Max a degenerate for not chanting along. Taking advantage of the chaos, Max quickly get away. Within the government building, it's uncovered that the nation is ruled by a fascism beneath the control of the obscure fathers who incorporate Strike and Umnik. When one father makes a botch, he is quickly murdered by the others, appearing they're heartless indeed with each other. After wandering around the city for a whereas, Max closes up in a bar and meets the waitress, Rada, rapidly creating a smash on her. He moreover sees another client get as well handsy with her, so Max instantly calls him out for it. Incensed, the man tries assaulting Max with his cane, but Max moves quick and rapidly incapacitates him, harming his arm to frighten him absent. The rest of the afternoon, Max and Rada chat a parcel. Max teaches her approximately soil and space, and Rada is uncovered to be Guy's sister. She also welcomes Max to remain in her domestic. On their way out, the client from some time recently blocks their way, eager for Vindicate. He has indeed brought reinforcement, but Max is still speedier and immediately dodges their sword assaults. At that point, the men battle him hand to hand, in any case their punches barely tickle Max, and he beats them up in seconds. At that point, the rest of the pack arrives with greater weapons, but no matter the number, Max can battle them all at the same time. Suddenly, a man catches his leg with a few rope, and after that, they get his neck with a whip. However, Max just uses these weapons to drag the adversary around and wrap up thumping them out. Within the end, only the cane man is cleared out, and he throws a little circle with blades at Max, who evades it effectively. Afterward, at Rada S. Put, Fellow moreover comes home and is stunned to see Max, but he recollects how he spared him and allows him to remain. 
Days start to pass and Max learns a parcel approximately the nearby culture, like the truth they're playing his thoughts on TV as in the event that it was a motion picture. The local people are too instructed that they live interior the planet, not on its surface, and there are no other planets or stars. History says that the Obscure Fathers stopped the war against the rebels known as Degenerates with the towers and spared the country. Fellow is exceptionally enthusiastic about needing to protect his domestic and welcomes Max to end it up a guard as well. Since Max has no ID or archives, Fellow has got to persuade Commander Chachu to allow Max to connect. To begin with, he has got to go through preparing, so Max learns the chant and joins mission trials, during which he must run through zones on fire and shoot at signs speaking to savages. Max is an excellent shot but his companion isn't, so Max gives him some tips to pass the test. However, later Fellow chastens him secretly, telling him to never do that once more because their bosses demand discipline. When they're at domestic, Max works out difficult whereas Fellow inquires him questions around the rulebook to test his memory. Some of the time they too fight. In his free time, Max hangs out with Rada and they eventually kiss. When Max is at long last acknowledged into the armed force, he joins his to begin with raid in revolt lands. The soldiers stormed into buildings with extreme brutality, using bombs and kicking people along the way. Max is shocked to find out that the so-called rebels are simply afraid of the common people of and immediately drops his weapon. While the others are arresting them, a gunman comes out of hideout and opens fire on them but is quickly knocked down and Chachu starts kicking him just for fun. Afterwards, Max watches as dozens of normal people are brutally arrested and forced into trucks. Chachu asks him why he dropped the gun, and Max explains that the word degenerate made him think that he would see wild animals and not just per citizens. Chachu begins insulting the rebels, calling them trash, but admits that they feel pain like everyone else, however Max explains that he feels no pain at all. Later, the fathers judge the rebels by shining very hot and bright lights on them. Some prisoners deny any rebellious activity, others insult their fathers by pointing out all people they killed. Depending on their attitudes, some prisoners are sent to daily labor while others are executed. The rebel shows them the mechanical arm he had to get after the guards injured him, and the fathers punish him by putting him in a suit filled with gas that burns his skin. Max has to watch all this and hides his disgust. He later tries to tell Guy how wrong this all is, but Guy disagrees and defends his government's methods. Since Max is so public, Funk finally finds where he is. In the evening, Guy and Max are called to Chacha's office, and when Funk arrives, they are already gone. After what happened before, Chachu wants Max to prove his loyalty to, so he takes him to the forest and asks him to shoot two rebels condemning to death. Max leads the rebels away and pretends to shoot them, but instead lets them go. He then confronts Chach and announces that he is leaving. Enraged, Chachu opens fire on Max, ignoring Guy's pleas for mercy. Afterwards, Chachu drags Guy back to the capital and leaves Max's body in the forest. Meanwhile, the fathers discuss tactics to finally put an end to the rebel attacks. However, Egghead notes that this would be a good time to combine all guardsmen into one giant army, implying that he wants another war. The others like the idea of a full invasion, but they must find a way to get the public to accept the idea of another war, perhaps by planning a false assassination. In the evening, the rebels find Max in the forest and are shocked to find that he is still alive as his body is recovering very quickly. Max explains Earth's health technology too and points out that his people do not know the meaning of the word mortal wound. The only way to stop him is to shoot him directly in the head. In response, the rebels explain that the fathers are dictators who seized power by force and that the towers are not for protection but that they are actually sending waves to brainwash the people. That's why they always experience patriotic madness twice a day at the same time. Some people are immune to these waves and suffer seizures instead, but government propaganda has labeled them degenerate so they can hunt them down. At this moment, the towers are sending out their waves, so the rebels put a stick in their mouths to avoid suffocating in the event of a seizure. In City, Smart Guy does the same thing privately. Thanks to his earthly body, Max feels no pain at all and helps the rebels to overcome it. Afterwards, Max and the rebels cut fence to advance into the tower area. When the rebels open fire on the soldiers and the alarm is raised, Max runs through the facility without fear of bullets, cutting down any soldier who dares to stand in his way with his bare hands. Several rebels are killed, the rest try to hide behind the walls of and continue firing at the enemy until the end. Max manages to sneak under the tower and plant a bunch of bombs before escaping by throwing a rope over the hooks on each rebel's clothing to pull them out with him, whether they live or not. 
Thanks to Max's strength, Group manages to escape into the forest just before the tower collapses in an explosion. Unfortunately, in another rebel dies of his wounds, leaving only Max and one other man alive. Sometime later, Max sneaks back into town and meets up with Rada again, not knowing that a neighbor has seen him and calls the authorities. When Guy gets home, an argument breaks out and Guy tries to throw Max out. Just then, the authorities from arrive, so Max immediately runs out to keep the siblings out of harm's way while begins beating up the soldiers waiting outside. He is quick and efficient, but unfortunately Chachu takes Rada hostage and Max has no choice but to surrender. Afterwards, Max is thrown into prison along with a group of prisoners, including ZEF and the guy with the metal arm. Meanwhile, Strike visits Egghead, who deliberately forces him to sit in a chair so narrow that it makes the guests uncomfortable like a subtle torture of. Since Egghead is in charge of the re-education program, Strike wants to that he will free Max so he can study him and they discuss the deal. However, after Strike left, Egghead sees Max's profile and learns that he doesn't have seizures. To obtain this power for himself, Egghead orders his employee to kidnap Max and make it appear as if he has mysteriously disappeared and also sends Strike a message that Max unfortunately died in battle. In the morning, prisoners will be sent to prison. A forest that needs to be cleared, which means they need to collect all the weapons left over from the war. Max's group suddenly sees a group of defense robots and immediately falls to the ground as S robots open fire and shoot in circles with no sign of stopping. Wait for the right moment for to return fire and they will shoot the robots one by one until they are all destroyed. The group then continues searching the area with Zeph telling Max about the creature he saw when arrived. He says that they are dangerous mutant people and must be killed immediately, otherwise they will be killed first. After wandering around for a while, ZEF suddenly falls into a hidden pit and Max jumps in to help him. They discover a series of underground tunnels and begin following them until they find an old abandoned building numbered. They notice a beast sneaking in. In the shadows, they turn on the power and find old equipment. While they are distracted by looking at the lenses showing them the desert, the beast takes the chance to escape and Max tells Seth not to shoot it. When S horrified duo notices human bones on the ground, the beast damages equipment to disrupt S energy before attacking. The beast manages to grab ZEF tightly and is ready to bite him off, but Max is strong enough to fight him with his bare hands. After a long fight, he knocks down the beast and saves ZEF in time. Later, while Zeph sleeps, Max removes the ropes, allowing Beast to escape. Zeph scolds him for this, but Max explains that these creatures are not animals. The next morning, Max and Zeph reunite with the guy with metal arms and continue searching the area. Under S trees, they find a small red tank stuck in a pile of vines, and as they try to get closer, they are attacked by a black tank that moves freely. The group runs to hide behind the trees and tries to open fire, but their shots have no effect on the tanks. Luckily, Max has an idea shoots the red tank to make him react, and when he tries to shoot back, he knocks off the black tank instead. Max then sneaks underneath and appears from behind to get inside. Cuts the wires to stop him. After eating lunch with the others, Max announces that he is running away. Security measures are taken at the borders to prevent the prisoners from escaping, but Max climbs into the tank and drives it south as mines hidden around him explode but does no damage. When Egghead finds out that Max has run away, he throws a tantrum in his office. Max eventually finds several soldiers guarding the road and is disgusted to see executed rebels nearby. He tries to hide in the tank, but the rules require that every vehicle be searched. Max smiles as he sees the soldier jump onto the tank, its guy, and immediately pulls him in before moving forward, destroying the gate and ignoring the other soldiers who open fire because they can't get the tank can damage. As they venture into unknown lands, Guy becomes angry that they could be executed for this and tries to escape, but Max traps him in a tank and promises him a much better life. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this.